Greetings, fellow musicologists. I'm Alex Tamulis. Welcome to the channel. The parchment is here. We've received the party in skin, and it's a tale told by one of the greatest bards slash rhapsodes in heavy metal, the one and only Steve Harris, and obviously recited by another sensational bard, the great Bruce Dickinson. Parchment is a writing material made from specially prepared untanned skins of um, primarily sheep, calves, and goats. So it's been used as a writing medium for over 2,000 years. Cutting edge technology of ancient times. This tale is meant to be read as a poem. One must consider the literal and the figurative meanings. So there's no way for us to really know how to decode it. A poem is just meant to generate correspondences, so it's meant to be read as a web of possibilities. So with that said, I invite you to embark on this beautiful journey to the Parthian Empire. So let's hop on a time machine, pun intended, and let's go back to 240 BC, spanning hundreds of years until roughly 100 AD. The song begins with a Phrygian vibe, that classic semitone between the third and the fourth degree of a scale. It gives you the mood, the setting. You see Iron Maiden is very cinematic. It's an ancient empire type of movie, you know, it's the context. So in this case, we have a clue because it explicitly refers to the Parthian Empire. But mind you that the main character says, well, the new moon will rise again. Um, I believe that it will be early dawn when the moon will rise again. So this is the eve, the early hours, before dawn, similar to Hell on Earth, but a total different army leader, different era. Until we read the Parthian skin, the Empire needs decentralized communication. It needs something that lasts. They will use parchment. It's the best technology. They want to. Uh, they want the message to reach the whole Empire, so thousands of kilometers. It's the northeast of Iran, Asia Minor, Afghanistan. Um, Black Sea region, it's just a humongous area to cover. The message is here to announce that warring times will commence once more. So let us hear the pounding of the drums from afar. Let us get into the mindset of battle. So Steve Harris is telling us that knowing battle times are coming are the best way for us to conquer fear. It's got beautiful poetic rhythm. For we all to dust descend, for we all to dust descend. Seven, heaven knows when life will end. Seven, got to know in the mire, put out the fire. Ten, so seven, seven, ten, beautiful meter. In the meaning, we'll all die, we're all mortal creatures, dust to dust. The only ones who know when the time comes are the deities. And the third line, in my opinion, means that the only true way to know God is just to die and find out. That line, God to know in the mire. So when you rejoin the earth, when your fire is no longer burning. Third verse now. So you want to overcome your fears. So there's a price to pay. There's a cross to bear. The price is no more and no less. This is the cost, to take life or to give your own. So the poem refers to vengeance since the Parthian Empire has conquered many lands. So here, we don't know if they're talking from a Hellenistic perspective, you know, from a mix like Alexander the Great, from a uh, Roman perspective or even like a Seleucid Empire perspective. There's no way to know, you know, but it gives you the idea from the art of war when it says, you know, you got, you got to be patient and you got to wait for the right moment to strike. The next verse is complex. It's referring to Lucifer. At least it says Lord of Light, the light bringer, the angel who has the most powerful connection with God and who fell, who decided to abandon God. And my only parallel here is that to be warriors, we need to really face death and bring death unto others. So, you know, the bloodshed and the violence will happen, uh, will be swarm with darkness, sorrow, and this is a suitable environment for Lucifer to guide people. So, the darkness, be our guide. Again, I might be completely wrong. This is a poem, you know, this is glossa, this is not prose, so this is meant to be read as a vortex of meanings. We don't stop if we face bad weather, you know, we march towards doom, we march towards the storm, we're supposed to do it anyway, and we bow 
to the gallant king. Again, you know, no way to know, but given the context, this gallant king we're forced to bow to might be King uh, Mithridates, since he's the one who rules the Parthian Empire. You know, he was a huge fan of Alexander the Great, and I believe that Steve Harris is referring to that admiration, fierce as a wolf with leopard skin. Alexander, he liked to wear a lion helm. The king always wore a lion scalp on his head like a predator, you know? Now the lines refer to the gruesome treatment that the invaders get, you know, battles that begin in the morning, bloodshed that's justified by the clergyman, you know, through sacrifices on temples, through prayer. And there's a couple lines now that really point to Mithridates. This king was terrified of being poisoned, poisoned to death. So a curious aspect about the king Mithridates is that he took small doses of poison to develop immunity. A man who doesn't want to die has to have sickness in him. Man immortal, sickness dwell. I'm not going to die because of it, you know, I'm protected. The harmony is going like crazy. Some people say that the parts are repetitive. I think there's a purpose to it. We're talking about cycles, about various battles and wars and hundreds of years and, and the emperors, you know, this is actually the Mithrid Mithridatic dynasty. So it's, it's meant to be cinematic. It will take longer for you to develop the story arc. Now the lyrics veer towards the cult like aspect of Mithridates, you know, he loved to be worshipped. He often said that he was Dionysus, reincarnated, and the war recipe was clear. You need to worship the gods, you need to use the power of tactics and strategy, and you need to have a purpose. You have to let people aspire to kleos, in Greek, glory. Battles are glorious, and if you die, so be it, because people will sing these tales for centuries onwards. We're all heading for the afterlife. And the song ends with that fire metaphor. It's linked to the stars. Since Mithridates uh, believed in shooting stars, comets, so they were just good omens. So when a comet blazes through, this is a sign from the gods that things are gonna go well for you. You know, you can feel that your strength will return. And if it happens, you can die in peace. And if you do, Meet me there. And that concludes our Parthian tale. Fellow musicologists, there's no way for me to tackle this tune both lyrically and sonically. Too much stuff, too daunting. I'll leave the sonic part for a future bass cover. Who knows? For the time being, I bid the farewell, stating that music is what music does. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing if this content means something to you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.